Welcome to the dawn, the psalmist timeline. We go through the dumbest timeline. Is this truly the dumbest timeline? And we're back with the second part of this fantastic conversation with Slack of the Beat Child. If if you thought I was excited about last week, you can only imagine what it's like to talk to a music producer about the use of AI in music. And you all heard how much Slacka also appreciates AI and and finds it interesting and finds it useful. So when we start talking about AI as it pertains to music and music production, I whenever I talk to a creative, I never know exactly what direction or how they're going to feel about it. But this conversation was great because he put me onto some ideas that I just didn't even think about the way he explained it, you know? So I'm going to let you get to it. Enjoy. Uh, and I'll be back at the end of the episode. And I, I say that because specifically as a music producer, this is where I want to also lead. How do you feel about things like, and I don't know if you've seen them, but you've probably heard of them, things like Udio and Suno AI, where mm-hmm. people can go on, type in a prompt, type in kind of a style, and a song pops out. And what does that mean to someone like you who's been doing this for 20 years, is one of the most talented producers I personally uh, know and uh, love listening to your stuff. But I I can imagine... Uh, And I did this test in the second episode where you can take someone's music and if the AI site doesn't have the recognition, if it doesn't recognize that particular track, you can upload someone's track and tell it to remix it and pop out your own version of it. Mm -hmm. So what is that for? Because we both like the tech, but here it is coming up against what you do professionally. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. Um, So. Whenever it comes to this, this topic, I try to think of the, the horse and carriage and mm. the combustion engine. Okay. Right? Like when the combustion engine came about, people who sold horses, they were scared. They're right. like, Wig, what is this new tech? No, like horses <laughs> yeah. are stronger. Horses yeah. are stronger. They're more reliable. They're not loud. Right. Like, no. So... I don't think anyone in that era thought that horses would one day be irrelevant. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, Things do change in tech and in transportation, they change. I still am of the kind of thought that this new tech that we're experiencing, Mm -hmm. you can't let it scare you. Agreed. The moment, the moment fear kind of dominates your thought process, you're, you're already losing. Agreed. Um, because they're tools at the end of the day. And if I can find a way to use these tools to increase productivity or creativity in what I do, then I'm adapting to the change because it's not going to stop. The mm-hmm. change is going to happen. I just need to find a way to leverage it to benefit me, right? And what I do. And that's what I've been doing. Like I, I have used um, Kit's AI for vo- voice cloning in demos that I do. Oh, cool. I've used okay. it. Udio. Not Udio. I've used Udio. Is it Udio that does the music? Yeah, Udio and Suno are the two that. Yeah, yeah. I've I've tried both of them, and okay. um, I I'm not I'm not a fan. I, I I'm not a fan in that. My first problem is that they're training on music that they don't have permission to train on. Right, which is something which is why there's the lawsuit, right? The the exactly. The, I, yeah, yeah. I, I think that's. I think that's. 100 percent unethical to do agreed because because when i hear prompts and i hear the music i'm like i can hear like four different artists and recordings like i can hear the recordings yeah that's yeah i i almost wish i could play something for you because uh, i realize for you who's been studying music because some people like to play the devil's advocate and say well a person listens to music and trains and then makes music and you know they're influenced by the things isn't it doing the same thing and i'm like no obviously not because it's learns the entire catalog of a artist in an hour and that's not the same thing as someone who spends their life and also 
the idea that you, when listening to something created by an AI music creation site like Udio or Suno or any other, you can mm -hmm. hear the different elements from the different yeah. artists. Yeah. Totally, totally. So on one side, I think that it's not ethical, but okay. this gets interesting where new way of thinking kind of comes into play. So what if we accepted that AI can freely be trained on whatever they, whatever is accessible, mm -hmm. but there is industry-based universal income? Oh, oh, sir. Okay, you're gonna get people mad now. I, 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 I am with. You. Like, I get what you're saying. <laughs> you, right? You are. You are okay. You're putting it into a situation where it's just like, listen, you guys want to do it this way, cool. But make sure everyone can live. That's exactly, exactly what you're saying. Yeah, and that, and, and it's only in industry, so industry based, right? Mm. Industry based. So if if you are uh, how you regulate it and how you um, govern it. Right. I'm, I, I haven't thought of that yet, but, but think of, um, you know, in the music industry, you get royalties, right. you get royalties based on tariffs. Mm -hmm. Like there's so many different types of royalties that you yeah. can get based on music being reproduced and millions and millions get collected yeah. for these uh, tariffs and royalties. Right. Yeah. I think there's going to be another tier where it's like, there's the AI tariff. And so any company who's profiting off of music has to pay a tariff. And that just becomes a, a royalty base, right? And I, I wish it was I wish it was advanced to the point where and I think maybe with like future tech technology, blockchain stuff I don't understand, mm -hmm. maybe it can log what's being used more or less yeah. and then that can be it right i don't know or no, I, prompt based so if an artist is or if a user is like i want something that sounds like be child mixed with blah 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 right if my name is used in a search yeah and i get a i get a royalty oh man wow this is such an interesting concept i like the idea that i'm picturing uh you know this kind of spherical percentage calculator where it it's uh, for every artist Let's say that every artist has its own color hue. I'm picturing kind of the sphere that's different colors blending of percentages, mm. and based on mm. that, you're calculating like, okay, well, it, we train the AI was trained, and for the production of this song, used these elements, so these people are paid out. So exactly. That is a very, very interesting idea. I love this. I love this. Yeah, exactly. And that's like trying to embrace the tech instead yes. of get mad and fight it. It's, I think conversations like this, you know, I, there's times that I wish I was a tech guy mm. really push these ideas. Yeah. Um, but I think that like in any industry that gets disrupted, but you're still working in it, I think that, and I think that's what uh, Sam Altman is kind of hinting at when he's kind of pushing this universal um, income thing. Because I think he yeah. knows yeah. that it's going... He knows more than we can ever imagine. For sure. How it's going to right change and impact the world. Yeah. Um, but I think like if, if that were the case, I could still create. Because yeah. I know that if people like my music and it's and they want to create something that sounds like it, yeah. they're going to use my name in the prompt or a yeah. song in the prompt. Yeah. And I'll get my royalty regardless. Wow. I will, I, I will feel like I have to stop making music. You yeah, know? yeah. So. No, this is this is super interesting. I uh, and I and this is such a. It's oh my god! I love this idea. I love that this came so early too, because I feel like this is something I would want to talk to other creatives. Because I I also want to talk to people who make arts like draw and stuff, mm. and in the idea where it's like because we've seen it, we have the Dolly and all these different sites that make content. And the AI uses a percentage of their art in its creation of the image, similarly to the music, and you pay out royalties based on the percentages, like you were saying, then it allows artists to still want to create. Because one of the things that I came across when I was at the convention and I kind of started talking to people about this stuff was some people were concerned there. Oh, well, if if I'm creating, what's the point if they're going to be able to steal all my stuff and just create based off of the prompt mm. using, you know, please draw like this 
John Sterling. Please draw like Frank Miller. And then you don't pay those artists. I'm talking mostly comic books because for those of you who know, I'm a huge comic book geek. But that 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 kind of idea of the next generation losing their interest because there's a fear that there will be nothing for them to create because everything will be able to be created. Well, then, no, because if this next kid comes along and has a unique style because they learned from this, but they adapted something uh, or similarly to you with music or anyone that learned, you know, like I always call it the coaching tree where it's like someone was uh, and uh, the example I always use for the coaching tree is uh, uh, John Stewart for the daily show. John Stewart for the daily show had his unique style, but created like a Hassan Minaj created a Larry Wilmore created a Samantha B and all these different people have their own unique styles, but based off of that, John Stewart style daily show and this is where we would have a beat child kind of right. like tree where the the branches all have their unique styles from learning from your music or Frank Miller with art yep. or um I'm trying to think of other art styles because there's more than just painting and music but for well, there's, there's voice writing, over actors voice over actors you know what I mean like or or um, over actors is a good y- one. even a- even actors yeah even actors like Oh my god, yeah. Any anything that AI has to train on yeah. to produce? Yes. That there that needs to be there needs to be a separate entity that regulates yeah, that whole thing, right? Because Beat Child to me that that's I, I'm I'm like I'm in awe <laughs> of the idea of no, but it's it's true. If if AI actors if you say I want 10% Nick Cage, 20% Bruce Willis, and and then it creates this kind of performance based on those elements, it's just like, yeah, but you gotta pay these people. Like that's you such still a gotta pay them, great right? idea. Yeah. 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 Because there's still gonna there's still gonna be money. At the end of the day, there's yes. gonna be profit somewhere. Yes. Right? Um, and not only is it gonna be profit, there's gonna be more profit because expenses yeah. are lower. Yeah. Expenses are much lower. Yeah. And um there, it actually also benefits the tech because yeah. there's this paradox. I forget what it's called, but AI can't train on AI. Right. That's what I was thinking. It eventually will run out of what it can do with. Yeah. Yeah. It, it like it like implodes on itself. Like um, I saw an image of an uh, image generator trying to train on generated images. Yeah, and it, yeah. what it popped out is like creepy and weird. It just yeah. can't do it. Right. Um, and it, there's a name for it too. The, it's a problem in tech that they oh, interesting. are tra- in AI that they're trying to. What's the product called? And, of course, know. they're trying to get rid of it too. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I just asked. I just asked. Uh, okay, so it says the paradox you're referring to is known as the AI alignment problem. Okay. Or more specifically, in this context, it can be related to AI degradation problem. So the issue arises when AI systems are trained on data generated by other AI systems, potentially leading to a degradation in the quality and accuracy of the AI models over time, which makes sense. Yeah. The primary concern is that without sufficient human generated data, the AI may begin to amplify errors, biases, and noise present in the AI generated data, leading to a decline in overall performance and reliability. So uh, and this is another term that can be related is the uh, synthetic data feedback loop, which describes the potential for compounding errors when AI systems are trained primarily on synthetic data produced by other AI systems rather than diverse and high quality real world data. So essentially, AI is like humans, where if ideally you're going outside of your own gene pool as much as possible to diversify the quality of the genes and the traits mm-hmm. that can help you mm-hmm. be. It's so crazy that it's so funny to think that even when AI is there, it's just like, don't mix within your family. <laughs> like that, that's, <laughs> like, that's what it is. Right. Yeah. Like, so it's, Definitely. It's so interesting, man. Okay. I, I mean, I, I know I want to talk for like hours and hours on end, but I know if I don't bring us to a conclusion, yeah, yeah, yeah. it will. So I'll ask you this. Can you okay. give me some final thoughts on, because already you've given us such a very, very interesting idea with the kind of universal tariff system for creatives. Because uh, one of one of the pitches I had, which now feels childish in comparison, was to put AI in the hands of creatives as opposed to allowing corporations. Mm. 
I guess, well, almost what you're saying still has creative's hands in it. Because I imagine if they were to build some kind of body to oversee this, hopefully creatives would have an input in it so that the corporations don't just say, yes, yes, the tariff is 0. 0.0003. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like some others, no, you know. Absolutely. It'd have to, it would have to be a, like a, a, a non for profit or like, like a SOCAN, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's and I would say significantly higher percentage than what some of the other private corporations that exist right now that you might be using to listen to this podcast uh, are paying creatives and artists. Yeah, those are <laughs> private. See, those are those are well, they're public companies, but public they're, they're shared. Yes, yeah, yeah, they're, yeah. they're corporations. You yeah. know, and it, 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 that's where it gets messy. Yeah, uh, but, but yes, I, your final thoughts, please. My my final thoughts are. Um, it's ex- it's exciting time mm-hmm. in AI and tech, and it's a, at the end of the day, it's a tool. Mm. I can use a hammer to build a house, or I can use a hammer to like break into a house. Right, right. It's just it's just a tool. Yeah. So, and one that can't live without us, based on what you just um, explained. So right. there you go. That's a really interesting point. And yeah. uh, so, so I, you know, I try to stay up to date with it. I, I try to use it as much as I can. Um, I think there's a huge amount of potential for it. I think it's so early too that we're not even looking at it the right way. Yeah. You know, like when stereo um, music came out, left and right speakers, producers and mix engineers they were putting the drums completely on the left side and vocals <laughs> yeah. on the right side because they thought like, okay, we have two speakers now, two channels. We uh, might maybe as well. this is like, yeah, we might as well split them up. Yeah. But then they kind of like figured it out and, and understood that mm, it's more practical to balance things. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And I think that in AI, we're there right now where, you know, we're making these pins that you wear and you right. push a button and it plugs your phone. And we're, we're still kind of in the discovery phase of what it actually is going to be used for yeah <laughs> slack it thank you so much my god this was such a fantastic conversation <laughs> thank uh, you i enjoyed it yeah yeah i really did i really really appreciate you taking the time to talk with me this was fantastic where you know where can people find all your stuff what's the best way to find your content yeah so instagram it's beat child music uh i'm also at beatchild.com and uh that's probably the best in what uh, tiktok slack the beat child cool and those are those are the socials follow me and uh yeah perfect uh guys i'll be back with the the sign off and just like that you got to hear one of the most interesting ideas i have ever heard when it comes to ai ai use and how we can properly invest in our creatives in an industry where people are starting to feel concerned about what ai would mean for art his idea of tariffs or percentages paid out to people based on the use of the ai and how it was trained on their work is very interesting and i know some of you are going to say but we don't even want to get that far But like we keep telling everyone, the genie is out of the bottle and we have to start looking at ways for us to work with and not against. And I think some of his ideas could really work. They could really, really work. I didn't say this in the podcast, but him and I spoke about it afterwards. When CDs first came out, they put tariffs on the CDs to pay out to artists. CMRRA was collecting that in Canada to pay out to artists a percentage of every CD that was uh, any, any burnable CDs that you bought went to them because it was understood that with those CDs, you could burn music. And I think that's really important to consider that if we're going to move forward with AI and, you know, my original idea of putting AI in the hands of the creatives almost blends with his pitch of having a over site body that collects tariffs based on percentages for the creatives and how those creatives work was used in training the ai it's very interesting so hopefully you enjoyed that episode we'll be back with another one soon i'm out everybody peace the dumbest timeline series two ai 
hosted by Brian Holiday. Produced by Brian Holiday for Brian Holiday Productions. Co-produced in partnership with Free X Agents Media. Theme song by Jasper Q. Jones. Mixing by Brian Holiday. Enjoyed the show? Follow this show on Spotify or review it on Apple Podcasts. Lastly, subscribe to The Dumbest Timeline on your favorite podcast app. Thanks for listening. It's funny you brought that up, and I almost should have said it before. It's something that they did with the CDs. Because remember when CDs came out yep. and you could burn a CD, there was a percentage. Yes, companies- exactly. The CMMRA was yeah. a Canadian body that yeah. paid off. Yeah, exactly, right? Yeah. Um, and the thing is, there's so much more money in tech. Yeah, yeah. Because think of it. If, and this, this not only encourages artists to create art, it encourages these companies to continue advancing their tech 